We can't go around measuring our goodness by what we don't do, by what we deny ourselves, what we resist, and who we exclude. I think we've got to measure goodness by what we embrace, what we create, and who we include. And that's from the movie Chocolat. And if you haven't seen it, go out and rent the movie. It's wonderful. It's inspiring. Goodness is not self-denial. Give up, give up, give up. You know, you go to church or temple or your mosque and you're supposed to give up, give up, give up. Well, goodness is not giving up. Goodness is pursuing your rational goals, whether it's a hobby you love, tennis, or or a badminton came to mind, I don't know why, but uh, just your hobbies, your career goals, your uh, love of your life, your the, those are the goodies in life, your good friendships, that's what goodness is. You're making yourself into a lovable person with a healthy character, with honesty and integrity. That's what goodness is. It isn't all of this, oh, well, I gave up everything I own, aren't I good now? No, you're a person who's going to be very depressed, resentful of other people who didn't give things up, and bitter going through life while you put on a fake smile and pretend that you feel real good inside, but you don't, and you don't want to live at odds with yourself. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner, and my show is the rational basis of happiness. And that means that you count, you matter, your happiness matters. And now let's turn to Max's happiness because Max is having girlfriend problems. He's wondering if he's oversexed because he's looking at pornography a lot and his girlfriend doesn't like it. And from the way he wrote the letter, I polished it a little in terms of the language. You know, he said, I'm always looking at porns. I said pornography. It, it sounds like he's relatively young. So I'm going to assume, Max, that you are either a young adult or maybe between 15 and 25, someplace in that range. And you're wondering, how do you get thoughts of wanting to see other girls naked out of your mind? How do you get that out of your mind? Um, Well, partly, I think a lot of women need to have thoughts of real sexy moments. I think men are trained to think sexually. It's permitted for them to do it. And women are trained to think about knitting and other things, but sex is not high up there on the agenda. So then when they get into a marriage, a real healthy marriage with a partner, there's a problem. Men have had a lot of rehearsal and a lot of liberty experimenting and thinking sexy thoughts and thinking about erotic fantasies. And women typically, I'm not saying across the board because the situation can obviously be reversed, but typically women have not had that type of history. So it takes them longer to fantasize. They feel embarrassed and ashamed and mixed or it's just in that they don't, they haven't built a habit of having a nice, clean sexual line so that they can have nice intimacy with a partner. So I think that's a problem. Now, given that, am I for pornography, what's typically called pornography, and using it the way you're doing? Using it the way you're doing? No, I would hate to be your girlfriend, Max, because I would feel that I'm not enough. He's always looking at other pictures. I can't satisfy him. That he, he'd he rather be, he gets more turned on by other people, by strangers, by people he doesn't even know in a video or in a, in between the pages of Playboy or, or something maybe uh, even more explicit. Um, then by me, are my breasts not big enough? Am I not good enough? Is there something that's lacking? I would lack, here are the key words, the emotional intimacy with you, Max, if I were your girlfriend. It's a skill to know how to develop emotional intimacy, meaning to help your partner feel valued, feel cared for, feel like she's the most important person in your life and you're the most important person in her life. And in your sexual life, this is true too. So if you are always turning to the magazines or to the internet or to videos, porn videos, then you're basically sending her a message that she doesn't really matter that much, and especially in this very weird area of sex love. Now, it's it you it's true that people develop their preferred styles of sexuality and if you're trying to change yours and learn what an intimate relationship is like then you want to move away from the porn you say you can't stop thinking about it well what if you replace the thoughts with 
thoughts about your girlfriend. And it doesn't have to be sexy. It can be just cuddly thoughts or cherishing what you love in her, training your mind to identify what you love in her. If you don't love her, then you don't belong being with her. If you're not a lovable person, then she deserves better than you. Let her move on. So it's either or. You cannot have your girlfriend in the type of sexual life that you're currently leading, which I know you know. Uh, There's a problem with porn also in that you'll see people doing things that your partner may never want to even try. Maybe it's a threesome or, you know, gang rape or who knows. And it can be a real turn-on for you. You know, repulsive as it is, it can be a turn-on for you. And you may desire that to happen in real life. Or vanilla sex may no longer feel fun when you're just having regular sex with your partner. So that's a side issue with the Internet, but a very important one. So... I would say that if you value your girlfriend and if you, or if you value having a romantic life in the future with this woman or someone else, it is important to train your mind to learn how to develop an intimate relationship together. Now, can you fantasize together or do you have to look in each other's eyes and say, I really like your eyes, I really like your mind all the time? You can have wonderful fantasies together. You can even get sexy magazines and look at them, provided that they're not crossing a line. But you can have fantasies with one another that are wonderful. You would never act on them in real life. And I wouldn't use people in those fantasies that you know because it becomes very awkward. But having a rich fantasy life with one another, coming back with stories, well, guess what I imagine today, honey, can be very erotic, very arousing, and can give you a rich life with each other. And then the fantasies or the, the, I don't know, the Playboy magazine doesn't become... Um, the other woman in your life, but it becomes a rich source of fantasies for both of you. So I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. You're listening to The Rational Basis of Happiness. And in the last minute or so, um, here's somebody who asked me a question about, oh, she says, I, this woman says, my daughter adopted a son when he was one days old. He's three and a half years old now. He's got a very sweet personality most of the time, but at other times he can become explosive. Um, he also has a half-brother who's five, who came into our house at six months old, so two adopted kids, um, who also has some behavior problems. Could the younger one be dealing with rejection because he was adopted at one day old, even though he was so young? What's the best course of action to take my daughter? The mom is strong on love and discipline and consistency. I do not think that a one day old could experience abandonment when all he's ever known is the parents, the bi- the adoptive parents. Unless your daughter is saying, well, you're not my real child and you're lucky that I adopted you. Well, then if she's creating that problem, that unearned guilt in him, then she's the problem. She needs therapy. She needs better parenting skills. So another possibility is your daughter can be strong on love, but when you throw in the words discipline and consistency, I wouldn't want her as a mom. I I don't mind the consistency, but discipline comes across as heavy-handed. I would go to my website, drkenner.com, D-R-K-E-N-N-E-R.com, and get the books um, by Adele Faber and Elaine Maslish. One is How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. It could also be the case that your daughter adopted children thinking it would be wonderful pie in the sky, and it ended up being a lot more work than she wants. And it could be very stressful for her, and she could be taking it out on the kids. So hope that's not the case. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. You're listening to The Rational Basis of Happiness. Be back with you next week. Your future hasn't been written yet. No one's has. Your future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and Dr. Edwin Locke. Here are some aspects of a romantic partner that you'll want to find out about. What does your loved one consider an ideal romantic evening? What about a romantic weekend getaway? What types of vacation does your partner like? Resorts? Sightseeing? Overseas or camping in the wilderness? Find out why. 
Does your loved one like surprise parties, spontaneous weekend trips, or prefer to look forward to jointly planned events? What types of small gifts does your partner most enjoy? What is your partner's psychology? Are there sensitive areas that set your partner off? Are there words, actions, or gestures that affect your loved one deeply, positively or negatively? You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com. And you can buy the book at amazon.com.